Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting by M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And today we are doing a study. It is called um, Spring Countryside. And this is a 5 by 7 um, this is a study for a uh, slightly larger piece that we'll be talking about next week. And uh, this, uh, this kind of motif's a little bit different for me. I generally avoided a lot of hillside stuff, but I had collected some reference um, over the years. In fact, <coughs> where I live here in New Zealand, it's pretty hilly. In fact, I'd say the whole country is pretty hilly. There's not a lot of, you know, big flat spaces here. Um, Anyway, uh, this is a kind of a different painting for me, and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Uh, I think it was pretty successful, um, and uh, that's why I'm sharing it with you here today. As a matter of fact, you can be sure I'm not uh, sharing anything with you guys that I don't feel was successful. Um, and uh, just last night, I was um, like, I, I think I the, the topic of last week's uh, blog post was, you know, don't be discouraged when you don't hit your goals. Well. I had a goal of having the series of 10 that I was working on done uh, within April, um, and it stretched out. But one of the reasons for that is because I basically injected about uh, oh, 25 or 30 um, additional paintings into the mix that were being uh, repainted, revised, and uh, changed in various ways, and uh, I've talked about that, so I won't get into that too much uh, now, but, um, so last night I was working on photography, and unfortunately my wife gave me a hand, because there was a lot of uh, photography to do, and uh, we got it all done, and I've got uh, things cropped, and then I have, I have tons of processing to do, um, uh, after the photography, uh, there's all the uh, specular highlights, um, which is always an issue. Um, which is these little, if there's any little tiny peaks in the painting, sometimes they'll they'll be hit by the catch light of my lamps. And even though I've got the lamps arranged so there's no there's no uniform glare over the entire surface, which is the important thing, I still get these little specular highlights. Um, the, I've looked into ways of uh, f doing photography without those. That's what people use uh, polarizing lenses and even polarizing filters on the lamps and stuff. And uh, I have tried the polarizing lens to no avail. And as far as polarizing filters for the lamps, it's just a bit out of my uh, price range and a bit, um, I don't know, I've just been going in by hand with the um, <coughs> healing brush tool in Photoshop and uh, basically fixing these uh, little highlights and uh, the truth be told I probably could get away without even doing that but uh, I like to have a really high quality choice photograph of each painting. Um, in this case I have quite a few high quality choice photographs of paintings that I've now revised and so I've got to go in and do that whole process again um, but I guess there's no rest for the wicked. Um, it is very good to do photography of your work. If you dig around in my uh, blog, uh, you'll see um, several blog posts that where I give tips about how to do this. Um, I have, ex I have, uh, you know, spent some money on some very good quality lenses um, because the one thing I want to tell you about photography is that you want the largest sensor size, you want the greatest amount of pixels you can, but sensor size is more important than pixel size or density of pixels. And the most important factor in the whole equation is a very good sharp lens. And I use a 100 millimeter lens. It's actually a macro lens from Canon. And it was about eight or $900 uh, when we bought it. Uh, my wife bought it for me as a gift when I first came out here to New Zealand and it's wonderful for macro but it's also very good it's my sharpest lens and uh, unfortunately I gave it a knock I probably talked about this in maybe uh, a previous video um, and while it was still focusing it wasn't razor sharp and I like to see as many brush strokes as I can um, with this photo because you know let's face it when the painting's gone sold in a gallery or whatever I may never see it again so having a good photograph is, uh, you know, it just makes me feel better about the whole process of letting the work go. 
and uh, in fact I don't really like to sell paintings until I have a good photograph. I have done it um, because I know that uh, painting buyers uh, can be few and far between so when they show up and they want to buy um, it's good to just give them what they ask for but who knows that might be a topic for another day. I know I'm going to talk a bit on the blog post about uh, how I wish I was a better painter and uh, uh, hopefully it'll be a short blog post, but uh, that's one thing that comes into light when you you get these... Uh, well, one thing I experience is, of course, I have these studies that I do. And sometimes I'm just so much happier with a study than I am with the larger painting. Um, that's frustrating, and it's especially frustrating if uh, someone I'm associated with might make the same uh, remark, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm evolving, I'm learning, like, uh, there's a couple that I took photos of last night, there's some things about the tree edges that bother me, and in the past I think I would have just let it go, saying, oh, well, I've done the best I can, but, um, starting with the, the last series of, uh, paintings I did, um, there were a couple paintings that needed to be adjusted, one of which I'm quite happy with the change I affected, the other one, it's like, hmm, I may need I may need to repaint the whole painting one day to actually be totally satisfied, but I am happy at least that I've got it to a point where I feel better about it. Um, so, you know, when you get a good quality photo, you're looking at it in the computer, suddenly it's been, there's a level of ab abstraction that's there. Everything is sort of automatically zoomed out and, uh, to the point where you can see this, the thumbnail and then I can start seeing issues with the painting uh, that you know have been uh, trying to, to they've been trying to speak up in the studio but uh, you know I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss or sometimes I just think well it, it's okay it looks okay um, but uh, when you get this in the computer that's when things really become clear and uh, I've decided there's uh, one or two in this uh, last ten um, just going to go in and uh, do some work on the edges of the trees. It might just be one. Um, you know, especially when I see them right next to the 5x7 study, which, let's face it, it's ten times easier to get a nice edge with a big brush in a small size than it is when you're working large. And this is one of the um, things that I work with and I struggle with. But uh, it's okay, you know, I'm going to get better, and I am getting better and better at it, and I'm getting better and better at working larger, and, uh, you know, it's all part of the journey, I guess, and, uh, while I wish I was a better painter, um, you know, I'm not completely disgusted with my output, I can see that I do some nice things, and that, uh, I'm successful, uh, at least some of the time. I'd like to be successful all of the time, and it's funny how, it's easy to take your uh, successful stuff for granted um, and sort of obsess about the places where you fell short. Um, but, you know, I don't recommend doing that, and I try not to do that myself. In fact, I try to just keep moving all the time. I think that's the key. And uh, I'm going in and doing these revisions, like uh, I'm going to take one of those paintings back to my studio and I'm going to work on those trees the first thing next week. Um, even though I'm, I'm basically starting up, I'm going to be doing a pass of five coming up, and uh, they range in size from 11 by 14 up to 18 by 24, and uh, that's um, they're big. They're all big. I'm not doing any eight by tens or eight by eights or anything like that. I'm doing a 14 by 14, 11 by 14, 12 by 16, a uh, I think a 16 by 22, and an 18 by 24, and. Uh, in a few cases, I'm going to be uh, revisiting uh, paintings, uh, motifs that I've done smaller in this larger size. And, uh, you know, I'm just <clears throat> maybe going to have to burn through some boards and get comfortable with the larger work. But uh, I'm uh, determined to, to do that and to get better at that and to get better at getting that loose, fractured approach that I really love. And uh, instead of, a, you know, too much of a plastic, overworked, over-rendered approach, which is what happens when you work larger. It's easier to do that. Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end of this video. Thanks for joining me today. If you'd like to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz and check it out. Um, I will be back next week with the larger version of this motif, so come on back now you're here, and meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.